Okay, uh, well, my name's Greg Adams. I'm from Germantown, Maryland. The, the banjo is essentially an African-American instrument with an African heritage. So if the earliest references that we have to the banjo go into the Caribbean and South America from as early as the 1620s, this instrument for the first 220 years or so was almost exclusively identified as, as an African or African-American instrument. And it wasn't until the 1830s where you start to see here in North America uh, a growing concentration of white people learning to play the banjo and uh, with the rise in interest in, in the idea of blackface minstrelsy growing off the banjo erupted into this popular music form, blackface minstrelsy, which uh, almost as soon as it, it reached uh, its real birth in 1843 with the Virginia Minstrels was almost immediately exported as America's first major popular music form. In terms of the instrument's popular trajectory, after the Civil War, there is kind of this push with as the banjo as kind of a commodity to elevate it beyond its low low perception of it being an African or African American instrument, a low class or middle lower middle class uh, white instrument as far as blackface minstrelsy and to say the banjo can be a respectable instrument played in the parlor by ladies and so there's this real uh, evolution in the construction of, of the instrument is, and so you see this growing disconnect from, from its African-American and minstrel root, uh, and then by the 20th century, uh, the, the instrument uh, was adapted into jazz forms, uh, and then uh, with birth of bluegrass as a popular music form, the, the five-string banjo continued to take on a real interest, straight-ahead volume, uh, strong melodic lines, and it's a real vibrant history. There are references uh, to the banjo in Maryland. Some of the earliest references that I'm aware of go back to the, to the 17. 40s, I believe. However, in terms of the banjo's role in Maryland as part of the popular music form, uh, we have one of the, the early commercial banjo builders, a man named William Boucher, Jr., uh, a Baltimore native who uh, is, is one of the, the few that we can start really saying that he was building more than one instrument uh, and was, that was reaching the market. I'm familiar personally familiar with over 200 early instruments from the earliest New World instruments uh, through the Civil War and shortly thereafter. And uh, at least 36 of those 200 plus instruments are Boucher banjos. Baltimore was one of, one of the key areas uh, that would really lend itself to a banjo industry. Boucher being aware of the banjo and its popularity as part of minstrelsy and, and also uh, perhaps through African American culture. There's, so there's the familiarity, but in terms of getting the materials needed to build, uh, being in an industrial area also lends, lends itself to, to kind of being a, the perfect combination of mixing culture with the commercial side and with the industrial side of, of reproducing instruments. Maryland, I believe, is, is rich in a combination of, of professional banjo builders and enthusiasts. You, there's a very strong traditional music community that, that engages one another in, in ideas about instrument construction, the responsiveness of the instrument, how it fits into certain types of repertoire. A huge part of the history of this instrument is, is not just the instrument as material culture, it's the repertoire that goes along with the instrument that is also uh, very vibrantly maintained in the state of Maryland. Maryland is, is one of the primary hubs for the maintenance of of the banjo tradition itself. Because of the, the transient nature of the DC area and this area surrounding in Maryland, uh, there's a lot more opportunity for kind of cross-fertilization of ideas. Where I've maintained my interest very strongly in the banjo is when it comes to the history of the instrument, realizing that it is an instrument whose history is not as widely known as it needs to be. Uh, and so for me, it's, it's, it's a much deeper issue in terms of, of its African-American history. In terms of, of different groups in the history of the United States, you, know, you have the dominant groups and those that are not as dominant. And it's the idea of trying to unerase the historical knowledge about this instrument. And uh, it's just become a very, it's, it's a very personal thing for me. Thank you.